Hotel Las Vegas, Nevada, the Grand Ballroom, as we are looking at an evening of Coors Superfights Kickboxing. Dan Walker, sure along with John Worley. This one, this one is a a match between a Thai fighter, John, and an American fighter, Rick Rufus, who we have seen several times here on the series. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Well, this is really a different kind of a thing because we've got we've got a, a blended set of rules. We're going to have rules that allow some of the, the kicking to the legs that you've seen or you will see in tie bouts but they are disallowing the elbow strikes they're disallowing uh the knee strikes when the fighters are up against the ropes uh the rounds are three minutes in length instead of two minutes so it is quite a different thing well and uh, rick rufus of course is the uh, united states light heavyweight champion so uh a guy who is stepping out of his a his range his his area just a little bit well, let's go up to our ring announcer, Chuck Hall, for the introductions of this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final event of the evening, featuring five rounds of kickboxing in the middleweight division. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Bangkok, Thailand. He is 22 years of age, stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, and weighed in at 162 pounds. He has a kickboxing record of 23 wins, five losses and no draws with 12 wins by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Chang Piet, Piet Song Ri. And in the red corner, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is 22 years of age, stands five feet 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 163 pounds. He has a kickboxing record of 28 wins, no defeats, no draws, with 15 KOs. He is the Kick World Super Middleweight Champion, Rick the Jet Rufus. Well, there you have the introductions. Rick the Jet Rufus, favored here in Las Vegas, and uh, Chiang Pyuk Ket Songret. And we will probably refer to him as Ket Songret for the rest of the night because that's an awful lot of name, and we don't want to do him a disservice by mispronouncing it. Again, if you just joined us, the red headpiece that you see the TIE fighter wearing is a... Okay, no mean against the ropes. Clearly understood. Any questions? Since we're having a blended set of rules, we are having some questions. And we're also having some, some language problems, I would guess, some interpretation problems. I think that probably the fighter again is being uh, explained by his trainer exactly yeah, what these variation uh, rules are. Right. The red headdress is a, is a symbol of the school or the or what we would call here in the states a dojo that uh, the fighter goes to, and the tassel apparently yes. has something to do with respect for his instructor. And again, we're looking at the ceremonial waters here being applied to Ket Sungrit. This is a Thai ceremony that takes place before each fight and as Bill Wallace explained to us a while ago what is happening here is Mr. Kit Songrit is telling the crowd and the other fighter basically what he's going to be doing or trying to do in this fight and again you wonder what goes through Rick Rufus's mind as he waits for this to happen pacing in the corner I'm not sure that he's particularly shaken up by it but well you know I think probably he is concerned you know uh, we've seen some of the Thai fighters really come out and really bang away at the legs of their opponents. And Rick Rufus is a guy who is very dependent on those legs. He uh, he does a lot of work with his kicks, and he's going to he's going to he's going to be concerned about that. And one thing for sure too, if Rufus can stay inside of this guy's legs, this I don't think this guy's probably ever been hit the way that Rick Rufus can hit him. We did have a chance to talk with Rick Rufus earlier in the day to get his opinion on going into this fight, and here's what he had to say. Tonight I will be fighting Thailand's number one contender. I expect it to be a good fight because for me it's the first time I've ever fought under these rules. Tonight I will show these people that I will fight under their rules and I expect it to be a great fight. Well, there you hear from Rick Rufus as the ceremony here preceding this fight continues with Mr. Sungrit, Ket Sungrit in the ring now. You can see the calf development on these fighters, these Thai fighters, uh, is very large. Uh, the kind of training they do, the kind of fighting they do, John. 
Well, they go out and they really work on those, those low kicks, and then they'll bring them up to the head, and they condition their legs and shins to be able to take a tremendous amount of punishment. It's amazing to me how they go out. And they'll actually go out and bang those shins against, against tree, uh, tree trunks to, to, to kill the, the nerves that run up the front of the shin, and it makes it so that they can use them just like clubs. And you can see the, I mean, his, uh, his shins look like about a 10 miles of bad road there. Not this puppy. No <laughs> way. But that is what has happened. Don't see any knee scars on this particular man. Um, we have seen some of the TIE fighters this evening who have shown evidence of arthroscopic, if no other kind of knee surgery. And it's not something you'd be very surprised to see, given that you're allowed to kick the joints. One thing that seems to be giving the Americans a hard time with the fighting the ties is that the ties like to catch kicks. They'll grab the kicks and then try to counter with by kicking the support leg. Yeah. And that's something that really is supposed to be against the rules. They're, they're not supposed to be allowed to lock in and grab onto the kicks and kick the supporting leg. If they grab the leg uh, and don't kick, they're subject to possibly a warning. If they grab the leg and deliver a, a kick or a punch afterwards, they could be penalized a point. And certainly, of course, that is something that is illegal at any time in American fighting rules. So it will be a, a something for Rufus to adjust to. And frankly, it'll be something for Ketsong Grit to adjust to because he's not allowed to do something that he does by reflex in the ring. It should be interesting. Rick Rufus, again, probably hits harder than anybody Ketsong Grit has run into. The question will be, can he get there before Kit Sangrit gets to his legs. Well, the one real advantage I think that uh, Rick the Jet Rufus will have is that he has tremendous footwork. He's very, very slick in the ring. He moves very, very well. He's not an easy target. He doesn't stand still and let anybody come at him under any circumstances. So he's not going to be an easy guy. He could be causing uh, the tie a lot of problems with his footwork. Well, we are about to find out. In, in a lot of cases, uh, on some tapes of tie fighting, I've seen the ceremony takes longer than the fight. Let's hope that's not the case here. As we're just about ready. Now, these will be three-minute rounds with a one-minute break, Jeff. That's my understanding, yes. Round number one. And Rufus goes right to the legs. Rick Rufus in the long pants. Kit Song Grit in the short pants. Rufus with a big bang into the ribs there. Took one coming back from it, but he landed one in the ribs there that I guarantee you his family back in Thailand felt. A right and a left by Rufus. Rufus moving around very well. Spinning back kick into the belly. That hurt the tie. Kit Sondrit is a little confused because Rufus is all over him right now and hitting him very hard. He is not getting off the kicks. Is not Kit Sondrit. And Rufus is backing him up. Rick Rufus starting off like a whirlwind in here, not giving the, the uh, tie a chance to really get set. Throwing lots of, lots of straight shots, lots of good punching techniques, and moving in and out and moving away from those kicks. He's doing beautifully here, and Kit Sondrit, quite frankly, John, looks to me a little bit confused. Now, that one landed high on the calf of Rick Rufus next to the knee joint, and he buckled a little bit and got out of the way. Rufus very good on his distance, and that's what's keeping him alive here. Kit Sondrit, does he look confused? to you, John. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, Dan. Does Kit Sondrit look confused to you in there? He looks to me like he is a little confused by the style and footwork of, of Rick Rufus, and he has been stung a couple times. He's felt a lot of the power of, of Rick Rufus. Halfway through this first round, these are three-minute rounds with a one-minute break, and as you can hear, the crowd is very, very into this. It's sort of evenly divided. The tie contingent rooting for the tie fighter. Everybody else rooting for Rick Rufus. And the crowd very much into this. Rufus, again, being cautious, keeping track of the distance. The tie fighter beginning to be a little bit more aggressive. His name is Kip left Sondrit. hand. He took a left hand there, and he's down. Rick Rufus landed a left on the jaw, and the tie fighter, Kip Sondrit, just crumbled is bleeding from the mouth, I believe, John. I can't see for sure, but that was a great shot by Rufus. And Kit Sondrit is hurt. Rufus wants to get on. Hits him again and knocks him down. Kit Sondrit is down again, and you can see his eyes are a little glassy, John. We have got a just about 30 seconds left in this first round. Kit Sondrit has got to survive 30 seconds here and is trying to hold on to do it. Rufus does not want to let him have it. 
Rufus is getting inside of those kicks, and he is landing the big punches. And Kitsondrit has never come across this kind of power, I don't think. Rufus doing a great job of keeping the pressure on, but Kitsondrit showing tremendous heart to stay in there. After being knocked down twice, he's fighting back on courage and on heart and on instinct. He is one tough fella. There's no two ways about that, and he is still rubbery-legged. But we are up to the end of round number one. At the end of that round, and you'd have to say that's about as good as you're going to do against a guy you've never seen fight like this before, Rick Rubis, acquitting himself very well as we look into the corner of Kit Songrit. They're over there working on Kit Songrit, previously trying to bring him back from that left hand. Rick Rufus has one of the quickest, one of the quickest and strongest left punches you'll ever see anywhere. We're going to see that now. He comes across with a kick, follows up over the top with a straight left right there. And you can see Kit Songrit's knees go up under him, and he goes back into the ropes. That was a hard shot. Great work by our cameraman on that one. I got to tell you, that was a that was a dandy little shot. It didn't look like a whole lot, but I just don't think Kit Songrit has ever been hit like this. You can see once again Rick Rufus coming on strong here, just keeping the pressure on. This is after that first knockdown. A right hook that misses, a left straight shot that comes straight through, and you can see crossed his eyes. Yep. Round number two, we're just about ready for here. A lot of ice in that corner, and referee Tom Schlesinger has to hold up the count here for just a second while they get that ice out of the corner. They did everything, put ice on his face, poured ice down the front of his trunks, trying to wake him up. That's one of the things you'll do with a fighter who's hurt. And you can see now that Kit Songritz certainly is ready to come out for this round, but they've got to clean up that corner. Oh, they can see the ice. They've absolutely created a nice palace over there. I mean, they must have enough ice to uh, skate on. We have a one point. One well, point and issue. that's something you pretty much have to do in that situation, don't you, John? Well, he is. He's just creating a tremendous distraction and delay, which, of course, is giving that fighter time to get back. And again, Rick Rufus, the long pants. Kit Songrit, the tie fighter in the short pants. Rufus takes one in the back of the knee there. And he is, as you pointed out, John, the key here is Rufus's footwork. Rufus is dancing away from a lot of this stuff. But he's making the time miss just like he did then. He's throwing lots of left-hand lunges. He's moving in, attacking the body and moving away. There's an attack to the knee. And that one looked like it hurt Rufus's knee. There's a left hand over the top and another left, and Rufus is inside. Rufus lands a right. The tie fighter again is stunned a little bit. I don't know that he's badly hurt, but he is aware that he's being hit. Once again, Kit Songrit lands a good kick on the back of Rufus's knee. That is dangerous stuff. You can see the Thai folks all around the ring here exhorting their fighter, and Rick Rufus is willing to stand and trade as long as he can do it. Rufus hit there in the leg. Rufus would like this to be a close quarters fight, John. He's trying to work, in, work inside. He's trying to step inside and land the left hand. The Thai is doing a good job of keeping his hands up and taking away the target. Rick Rufus having to move away from those powerful kicks to the legs. Now again, Rick Rufus tying up there as we're halfway through round number two. And Rufus looks to, as if he has hurt his knee here just a little bit. He is holding his left knee. He's slow getting up. And he is. He's moving very gingerly on those legs. Lands a right, a round kick, and a right and a left from Rufus. Rufus needs to end this one fast. And he lands the left. And Rufus is throwing everything from Iowa. Rufus is throwing the big leather here, trying to get out of this one because he doesn't want damage to his knees. Kit Songrid has heart, no doubt about it. One minute left in this round. Kit Songrid, the tie fighter, stalking Rufus, handling the distance well. Now, it'll be interesting to know how the judges are going to score this because in a, in a tie fight, Oh, no, Rick Rufus was stomped when he was down. Now, you wonder about that. I'm not sure. The referee is calling time. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. It's hard to tell, to be honest. But I think that's probably illegal. We'll get a shot at that again. Rick Rufus was in the course of being caught with that kick. Fell down. The TIE fighter stomped him in the stomach. Now, I think it's probably fair when it's a straight... Well, obviously, right. when, the, when the guy's down, you can't attack him, and he's got, he got stepped on pretty hard. Rick Rufus probably was relaxed a little bit at that time. He talked a, a lot of force in the stomach. 
So and Rick is looking a little bit hot under the collar right now. And they'll give Rick some time to, to, to uh, relax from this. We're going to take a look at this. There's a back kick that misses. Rick Rubens is tripped up and goes down. He's obviously down. And here comes that stomp. And there's a right pretty strong <laughs> stomp right on, just squashed him right on the stomach there. We've got a little bit of a melee here at ringside if we can get a look at it. Uh, what we have is a lot of people trying to communicate with Tom Schlesinger, the referee. And there is a language problem going on here. Well, <laughs> there you have it. Don't you do that. I guess that's Thai and American both at the same time. Don't you do that. And again... Tom Schlossens are telling him if he does that again, if he stomps on him or does that sort of thing again, he will be disqualified. You know, we really probably ought to say some good things about Tom Schlesinger here. This is not an easy thing for him to be dealing with. This is new to him, too, and uh, he's handling himself pretty well in this fight. He hasn't let this fight get out of control on him, and he has every potential to, as you can see, the crowd up around the ring, standing up close around the ring and standing up close and very tight behind us. And again, we are back going here. There should be about 30 seconds left here in round two, John. Rick Roof is trying to get to make, trying to finish this thing with a knockout. He really doesn't like this. He doesn't like the idea of getting those legs kicked. He's trying to land again with the left hand. Good spinning back fist by Rufus that landed and shook Chandra, gets on grid up. A high round kick to the jaw, but to do it, he had to take one to the back of the knee, and I'm thinking Rufus probably... Hang on to your seats, folks. Do not go away. This is going to get better. We'll be right back. We're back at the Sands Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, and as you look around, the, look into the corner of Rick Rufus, he has been taking a lot of punishment to his legs, and he also got himself stomped in the belly a while back. We're going to see these leg kicks that come just driving in there to Rick Rufus. He throws, he throws a back leg round kick, and we had, a, we had two points deducted in that last round. One of them was for stomping Rufus in the belly. I'm not sure what the other one is, is for, John. Uh, oh, the, the ice in the corner. They didn't get the out corner, of the corner. Yeah, the ice in the corner, and then the second one was for the stomp. And they are creating yet another avalanche in the corner over there. And once again, as we start for round three. <laughs> well, this is a tough one to score. I've got Rick Rufus ahead by three points. How, how, how can you tell? Because, yeah, the... the Kick Songert lost two points on the last round. He won that last round. Kick Songert by 10 to 8 or 10 to 9, but he lost two points because of all the problems. Rick Rufus, again, an American fighter, not used to these rules in the long red pants. Kick Songert is not used to being hit. That's a legitimate knockdown. Well, now Schlesinger's calling that one a slip. The way that works, the kicks to the legs don't get called as knockdowns. They get called as sweeps. So, again, it doesn't count as a knockdown. Rufus with a good left to catching Kitsongrid coming in. Kitsongrid, a tough young man. Oh. Rufus has hurt him a lot, and he's still there. Rufus taking a lot of stuff on his legs here. And you have to wonder if Rick Rufus isn't wondering why in the world he took this fight. Rufus needs to go back to the plan of moving in more. He's not attacking enough, he's, and he's got to use that type of thing. Straight shots, those side kicks and front kicks can do something to stop a little bit. Now, Rufus, as you say earlier in the fight, was doing that and, and scoring very well. Shook Kitsangrid up badly in the first round. Now he seems to want to dance away, and that's not working. Quite honestly, it's not working. Good left hand then by Rufus. A left and a right. He's catching the kick stronger to go down at the very end of those punches. He's not really hitting in close enough and short enough to have a, a lot of steam on him. And there is another potential problem. When Ken Songbert comes in to kick, Rufus drops one hand down to block the kick, throws with the other, throws a punch with the other hand, leaving himself wide open. A minute 30 left to go in round number three. We are halfway through round three. Ken Songbert landing the kicks, and Rick Rufus looking a little bit tentative for the first time. Good left and a right and a left by Rufus as he is fighting from the right side. Comes up with a good uppercut into the ribs that shook Kitsangrit. Crowd very vocal in the background. John and I can hardly hear each other. There's one minute left in round number three. 
That shot to the legs hurt Rufus. Rufus again landing those punches, but they're too far extended to really have a lot of sting on. And he's also not he's also not able to get a rotation of his hips to throw the punch, John, because he's got bad legs now. His legs are obviously bothering him. He's really having a problem. Now yeah, there's a throw by Kit Sangret, which under normal circumstances is legal. I'm not sure if it's legal in this fight or not, John. Are you? We didn't really discuss that. We didn't discuss whether it is legal. It's okay. Not, I think that there should be no warnings issued on that because we really discussed that. And Rufus's legs are clearly hurting him. Once again, Tom Schlesinger are warning him about the throws. If you Rick Rufus. Rick Rufus is over here limping, obviously legs bothering him. If Rufus is going to win this, he's going to have to do it fast. The problem... Oh, he's penalizing three points. Oh, my goodness. Well, now that's strange. What are the three points coming from now? Rufus with a good kick into the ribs. And again, Rick Rufus is taking, his legs are just taking an absolute pounding. And you wonder if Rufus isn't being just a little bit too brave here. He doesn't really have much to lose in this thing. He ought to just forget it right now if his legs, this, if we're talking about a potential world champion here. And you just wonder, well, it is wild and woolly at the sands, folks, and we're going to have more after this. The problem that we're having right now, the problem that we're having in this fight is that as we see this yeah. hip throw that Keith Songrit throws on Rick Rufus, is that we have fighters fighting in two different games, and they really haven't had a chance to work the rules out to the point where both fighters are comfortable with some sort of a blended set of rules, and it's causing an awful lot of discussion and an awful lot of unhappiness on the part of both sides, I would say. And add to that the language barrier. Uh, obviously, Tom Schlesinger, our referee, uh, who I think is maintaining pretty decent control of this fight, considering, but he doesn't speak Thai. The Thai fighters don't speak English. It's very hard for him to communicate with them in there. And they, of course, are probably feeling slighted by the by this penalty by these points penalizing. But then again, the rules are the rules. We're going to see another strong leg kick here. Bang, right on the inside there of the, of the knee, taking Rick Rufus hurt. down. I mean, that's just, that's um, got to be incredibly painful. Anybody who's ever played a minute of football can tell you how bad that hurts, let alone kickboxing. Rick Rufus. Rick Rufus now trying to keep away from the legs of Kitsongrit, and probably his safest haven is as close to Kitsongrit as he can get. Rufus has the power, and Kitsongrit has never been hit the way Rufus can hit him. And Rufus is hurt now. He's hurt he bad. tried to spin fist there, and he got kicked, I think. And he is down and hurting. It is not that from a punch, his legs are killing him at the moment. Rick Rufus in the corner, can we hear this? Well, he said in there, they ought to stop this corner ought to stop this. They really should. This is a, this is a case of, of Rick wanting to be too honorable here. This is an exhibition fight. It was really taking a chance on, on suffering some permanent injury. If he's going to stay, John, he just ought to get right up on the guy and let him have it. Otherwise, he's... Kit Sondrick looking very, very strong now. He's just obviously extremely aggressively coming in with those leg kicks. Well, he knows uh, clearly, and the referee, Tom Schlesinger, has stopped this fight, and probably that's a very smart thing to do. Rufus really is not being hurt by punches. What he is being is hurt in the legs, and this is something that uh, you just... It's silly to take any more risk. Rufus, as you can see there by our camera, is in some considerable pain, and they seem to be, well, it's hard to tell where on his legs they're working. It looks like the left one at the moment, the right one at the moment, from this angle. Well, that's a, that's a really a, potentially a very serious situation. Rick Rufus just had his legs pounded there for almost, almost five rounds. Keep 
Sondra came back, showed tremendous courage in being able to come back from that knockdown in the first round. And you really wonder at the wisdom of taking this fight on the part of Rick Rufus, uh, game as he might be and as great a competitor as he is. Um, Bill Wallace is in there working on Rufus Wallace, uh, obviously with some experience in knee injuries and leg injuries. We're going to see now <clears throat> Rufus spinning around but catching it right in the very back of that right knee. And you can see just great pain as he goes down. And what we are seeing now is Wallace, Bill Wallace is in there. You can see his hands there checking the stability of that joint, trying to check for ligament damages. Let's go up to Chuck Hall to get the official time on this one. Our ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 23 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by the PKO, John Buick, the Well, you can't take it away from Kit Sundrit. He did what his job was to do in that fight, and he won and did very well doing it. Rick Rufus is still down, and Bill Wallace is still working on the knee, the right knee of Rick Rufus. What he's doing is feeling for any release of fluid from the bursa in there and also checking for stability of the joint to see any problems, possible problems with ligaments here. As you can see that Rufus is in considerable pain. I don't know that Rufus got hit any time during the fight. I think it was almost everything to his legs. I don't believe he got hit at all in the head or even in the body that much. But those legs just took a pounding from the very first bell. Uh, he showed tremendous courage to stay in there as long as he did. He really should have been out of there after about the third round. But uh, we just have to hope that his knee is not seriously damaged and he doesn't have to have any long recovery period. Well, we'll be back here in just a moment, John and I. Don't go away. Well, you're looking right now at a very wild scene here in the Grand Ballroom of the Sands Hotel here in Las Vegas. Rick Rufus has just had this fight stopped against Mr. Kit Sangrit from Thailand. Rufus is down with some leg injuries here. They've put a little bit of a, a gauze tape on his leg. John Worley is up in the corner with Rick's, or up in the ring with Rick's brother, um, Jeff Rufus. And John, why don't you go with it? Jeff, uh, how serious does it appear his knee is hurt? Well, it's possibly strained. That's what uh, former world champion Bill Wallace believes. I'm not sure. I just know that he's in pain, and the leg kicks were the only thing that stopped him. The guy did not touch him anywhere else in the body, you know. I I think, you know, that Rick should have won the fight. He had the guy out. There are three major fouls, but it's the way the cookie crumbles tonight. Let's take a look at the monitor down here, Jeff, and see if you can show what's talk about these leg kicks. Right there, you know, he's just buckling his knees. It's the same type of injury that ends a football player's career. You know, I, I don't think it takes much talent to kick somebody in the legs. As you saw those jumping, spinning kicks that Rick was throwing and all the defensive ability, I think that's real talent, real talent, you know. I think that he is better than this fighter, but the rules just didn't allow him to win tonight. Once again, as we see these leg kicks, uh, it seemed like that was pretty much the entire game plan for the fighter uh, from Thailand is just to come in and drive those kicks in there. Rick Rufus going up over the top with a round kick that doesn't quite connect. But what, were you, what were you telling him between rounds? To step inside the legs, to step inside the legs, but he was. The guy was trying to tie him up, but we really weren't too successful. I mean, he had him knocked out, but the guy was tough. We've heard that about Thailand fighters. Benny the Jet, another American, he's fought over there, Don Wilson. They've all took their lumps over there. The Thais are real tough fighters. And we see now Rick Rufus being moved away. He's got that knee immobilized, and they're taking him out of here on a stretcher. He's obviously still in a lot of pain. I know, Jeff, you'd like to go ahead and, and get over there with him, so we want to thank you for stopping by with us. We certainly hope that Rick has uh, suffered no serious damage or no permanent damage, and that he'll be back in the ring in a very short time. Well, I hope that, you know, people realize that ties, if they fight our rules, they're not going to win, and we're not going to fight their rules. All right, we can't. It's just... We experimented tonight, but we found out it's not worth it. It doesn't take too much talent to kick to the legs, so that's how I'll end up tonight. Once again, we thank you for stopping by, and Dan, we hope that uh, Rick Rufus will be back in the ring very, very soon. Certainly do, and again, thanks to Jeff for talking to us, because I know he probably wasn't uh, in the happiest frame of mind. Don't go away, folks. John and I will be right back on SCORE.
know, the way this thing started out, John, too, is this one really could have been over in the first round. Well, Rick Rufus came out in the first round. He moved like we thought he would. He landed a good left, straight left hand there on Kitsonger. That was the second knockdown. And, and really, at this point, I think everybody pretty well thought this fight was about to be over because uh, Kit Songert looked like he was out on his feet. He almost went down a third time. He managed to hang on and hang on to, you know, to, to the end of that round. And then after that, he came back and began to work on those legs. And yeah. it seemed like he was completely back together. The, the, uh, his corner you know, brought a little time. They, they, they spilt a lot of ice and threw a lot of water, made a big mess, and figured, okay, if we, if we lose a point because of doing that, exactly. it's worth it. We need the time, sure. and the time is really what he did need, and he came back and did a good job after that. And you know, the other thing we saw there, John, and, and we'll see a little bit of difference here in just a minute, uh, Rufus was inside. Rufus was fighting close, making it a hand fight in that first round. As, as we'll see later on here with some kicks, you see that Rufus is trying to stay away, and that's when he gets connected with on the kicks the most. That's the one thing that he didn't need to do, and it was the one thing he wanted to do because his legs were getting hurt. Well, I'm sure his mind was telling him to move inside, to get inside, and his body was saying, oh, 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 because look at this. Those are, those are the kind of things that you can see the force of that kick is just twisting his upper body and causing him to lose balance, and it's just a tremendous amount of punishment with, uh, assigned to those leg kicks, and Rick Rufus was not able to force himself to get back inside, and that's really a, that's, that's a shame for him. I'm sure he'll be back. He's a great athlete. He's a very young man. So this is not going to be something that stops him, I'm sure. Once again, an injury to Rick Rufus's right knee, and we hope, of course, that he will be okay. Again, a very exciting night here. It was an experiment. We had some fun with it. The crowd got a little unruly, but that's what you expect. Folks, we'll be back again next week. Hope you'll join us. I'm Dan Walker, my partner, John Worley. Good night, everybody.